Hello, my name is Jason, and it's good to see you today. I'm speaking on behalf of Samuel's Weaver Theological Seminary. It's an online seminary where you go and you can study, you can learn about Christianity, or you can study to train to be a preacher or a pastor. You just go online and find whatever courses, whatever things that are going to help you to do that. And I'm just going to share about how to preach from the Bible, how to study the Bible. And it's only a simple thought, but it's very important. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Preach the word, says Paul to Timothy. Preach the word. Now, throughout the world today, most preaching is not done from the Word of God. We get a lot of preachers in many countries today that are preaching that if you come to Jesus, you'll have a big car, a big house. Um, but that's not in the Word of God. The Bible doesn't say you're going to have a big house. The Bible doesn't say you're going to have a big car. So we're preaching the Word of God. That's what we've got to be preaching. In Western seminaries, new ideas of biblical interpretation have come. Post-colonial studies, feminist studies, gay studies, black theology, liberation theology, deconstructionism. And all these new ideas about how to study the Bible has come in. And is blinding the church. And Paul says to Timothy, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And the Apostle Paul would say to post-colonial studies, to deconstructionism, to feminism and all these ideas, I don't want to know them. I don't want to know them. They are not the word of God. I want to preach the word of God faithfully. And we've got to be doing that, folks. As preachers, you've got to be getting into the word of God. Teach the word of God faithfully. Not your opinion, not your ideas. Not modern ideas. Not your experiences. But get deep in the Bible and get the Bible out to the people. The word of God. That's what you need to be doing. And so it says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Preach the word like John Chrysostom, an early church father who was called the golden mouth of the church. And he preached systematically through Galatians, through Romans. He preached the word. Preached the word like John Calvin. Week in, week out. He preached chapter by chapter through the Bible. Preached the word like Adolf Schlatter. Went through chapter by chapter of the word of God and taught it in its context. Preached the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching like Stuart Olliot did in Liverpool when he went through chapter by chapter. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching like Jeff Thomas in Wales who went through chapter by chapter. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convute, convince and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Like Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones, who went through chapter by chapter, verse by verse, precept upon precept, in, through the word of God. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Like John MacArthur did. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Augustine said to his students, they asked him, how do you interpret the Bible? The students asked him. And Augustine said, there are three things that you need to learn about how to interpret the Bible. And he said, these three, three things are, number one, context. Number two, context. Number three, context. And that's what you need to be doing, preachers. You need to be getting the word of God in context. That's what you need to be doing. Studying the word of God and get it into context. And stop, stop preaching 
things that are your ideas. Stop. Stop giving ideas to the people of God. Give them the word of God in context. Stop coming with clever ideas. Your clever ideas from seminary. And you're poisoning the people of God with your clever ideas from seminary. That you've learnt from seminary. People don't want your clever ideas from seminary. They want the word of God. They want the word of God. We don't want your clever ideas in the church. We don't need your clever ideas in the church. We don't want them. We want the pure word of God. We don't want you to come along and say Genesis 1, 2 and 3 shouldn't be interpreted that way. We want to interpret Genesis 1, 2 and 3 according to the word of God. We want to follow the word of God. We want the pure word of God. And we want preachers who preach the word of God. If you're preaching ideas, get out of the church. Leave the church. Leave the pastorate and go be a, a lecturer. But don't be preaching from the Bible if you're not going to preach the word of God and it's just going to be the Bible with, with your ideas thrown in and it's all about your cleverness. And all these pastors and preachers, these women preachers who are coming in, giving all these fancy little ideas and thoughts and all these gay preachers coming in and twisting the word of God and not preaching the pure word of God and, and, and massacring the word of God because they, they don't want to say things that are wrong and they don't want to upset people and all these liberal preachers who twist the word of God. We don't want them. If you want to be like that, go find, go form your own church. Go do your own thing. But don't poison the flock. So I'm saying to you preachers today, who are the true preachers, get into your Bible, study it in context and teach it in context. And be mighty in the scriptures. And God forbid you that you should ever go into this modern, these modern ideas. You don't need them. You don't need them. You need to be into the word of God and strong in the word of God. That's what you need. And you need then to pass that on to your people. Will you do that? The church is dying of a famine of the word of God. There's a famine of the word of God. And it's your task to take that word to the people. To take it to them. They're starving. They're starving. And they don't know why they're starving. And they're starving because these idiotic, stupid preachers who think they're so clever because they've got a degree or an MA or they've been to seminary and they think they're so clever. But they're idiots. They're stupid idiots. And they shouldn't be preaching the word of God. They're, they're stupid. And they need to leave the church. And you need to take over and teach the word of God teach them the pure word of God for this is the living breathing word of God it is truth it is life it is vigor it is power it is joy it is comfort it is about Jesus him dying for us giving his life for us and Paul says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly So I expect every preacher who hears this to get preaching the word in its context. Okay? And I expect every idiotic preacher today, any idiot, because they've gone to seminary and taken on these stupid ideas from men, to stop it now. To stop it. Pack it in. And come back to the pure word of God and let the Bible speak for itself. And I guarantee if we do that in the Western churches today, uh, a mighty revival will take place. And if we do it in the Eastern churches, there will be a mighty revival. But if we continue to do what we're doing at the moment, the church is going to die because it lacked food, spiritual food, because you failed to give the people the word of God in context, context, context. Almighty God, I confess all my failure and all my sin. And I acknowledge 
the wickedness of my own heart. And I acknowledge the pride of my own life. And I acknowledge, Lord, that you are our God. And we praise you and we worship you today. We give you all the glory, Father. We acknowledge that thou art God. We acknowledge that thou art our Saviour, our Lord, and we praise you. And we worship you. And we want to bring you glory. And we just acknowledge, Father, that you are our God. And Father, I pray for all preachers today who are tired and discouraged. Strengthen them, Father. Strengthen them, Father, with your mighty hand. And I pray for all the young preachers today that they would stay faithful to your word. And they would renounce modern ideas. They would stamp modern ideas under their feet. And they would say, no, we are going to preach the word of God. We are men of the word. And we will proclaim the word of God to the church. I pray that every young preacher would do that, Lord. Preach the word of God faithfully. Bless them, Lord. Give them strength and encouragement. And may they preach with power. And may they feed the church. And may the church grow in the word of God. Back to the Bible. Back to old time preaching of the word of God back to the living God and be gone with modern ideas we praise you Jesus Christ our saviour and our lord we praise your holy name praise him praise him worship him and adore him praise the king of kings praise the lord of lords mighty saviour mighty lord Father, we thank you in his name. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your gentleness. We thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercies anew every morning. O oh God, be with the preachers today. Bless them, Lord, and strengthen their hands. Lord, I pray. I pray that these silly, idiotic preachers with modern ideas, with their modern degrees and their modern MAs and PhDs, Lord, I pray that you would smite them and show them that you are God and show them that they are messing with the living God and his word. And how dare they. How dare they mess with our God and his word. How dare they set up seminaries. How dare they mock you God. How dare they. May they know that you are the living God. And may they know that on judgment day. They will come under the fire of God, under your wrath for their stupid, idiotic, pathetic ideas. Because they did not preach Jesus, the beautiful Saviour. Jesus, the beautiful Lord. Jesus, who died at Calvary. Jesus, the beautiful Saviour. Jesus who rose from the dead. Jesus who is sweet and kind. Jesus who melts our hearts. Jesus who holds us in his arms. Jesus who's taken us home to be with him forever and ever. To adore him and praise him. Jesus who died for his lambs. Jesus our Lord. Because they did not preach Jesus. They dare to preach their own opinion. They dare to preach their own ideas. And God will blow upon you. And destroy your ideas. And destroy you. Forever and ever in eternity. But you fail to see. Our God is a living God. 
Our God is a living God, creator of all the universe, powerful. You fail to see that and enjoy the riches of his word. So don't do that, please, O oh preachers. Don't do that, please. Don't preach your opinions and your ideas. But preach the word of God. Please preach the word. Please get away from your ideas and your philosophies. Come and preach the word of God. Preach it. Lord, I pray that you bless these preachers and these liberal preachers that you would open their eyes lord and bless them open their eyes and may they trust in you lord i ask these things in your name lord for your glory amen amen god bless you